Hello Vinyl community! I had just a couple of minutes ago the first snow started falling here. So I'm making this video again here in my workroom where it's quite warm. The other room where I have all my records, uh, it's much colder right now and I don't want to heat it up just for that. Um, so what I'm listening right now, uh, let's have a look at it. There are some uh, really gro glorious uh, contributions here and uh, a lot of stuff from Japan actually. I have not shown anything from Japan for at least a week now so uh, let's get back to it. Now this is of course a classic Naughty Boys by YMO. Um, yeah this was their album from uh, 1983 and it came right after Technodelic and uh, it's very different than Technodelic. It's Yo Magic Orchestra kind of uh, embarking in a more pop oriented direction. It's again a very balanced uh, sharing of uh, writing credits between uh, Hosono, Sakamoto and Takahashi. Uh, and the first song, Kimini Munekyun, has actually been uh, covered by the Human League, imagine that, in Japanese. Um, so um, this is a great album here. I really like it. I mean, there's a lot of wit, a lot of uh, tongue-in-the-cheek stuff on this album, as usual with Yellow Magic Orchestra and some great tunes. So another wonderful masterpiece. Now, just a year later, Ryuichi Sakamoto started to record his illustrated musical encyclopedia which is this album uh, that came out in 1984. Um, this, is a, this is an album with an extremely precise music. This is very well recorded and it has an amazing sound. And he's of course a true master of, of piano playing and of keyboards and of electronics as well. And it all gels very well together on this highly interesting album. Now um, this is actually the very first Sakamoto album I ever bought even though I had bought it on CD back in the day and it was um, because I, have, I had seen this movie by Nagisa Oshima which is called Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence this is like 1988 or maybe 89 and uh, I had uh, so this is a second world war movie starring David Bowie and uh, uh, Takeshi Kitano and uh, yeah, I noticed that this kind of a historical movie had a quite an electronic soundtrack. I found that interesting, so I started to look up who the composer of the soundtrack is. Just to realize, to my surprise, that the composer is also one of the main actors in the movie, which is quite unusual. I mean, most you wouldn't put most of the world's uh, musicians and composers in a movie. It usually doesn't work that well. And um, so I went just in a store. I, I had hoped there would be some uh, some uh, compartment with Ryuichi Sakamoto music, uh, which was a tall order because in the 80s he wasn't that very much known in Germany, I would say. But to my surprise, there was, but uh, not with the soundtrack, but uh, with these two CDs. Those are still the two original CDs that I had seen there. Well, it was quite a fascinating. They were all kind of black and white and very stylish. So I thought, well, if I if I don't take it now and I come back tomorrow, they might be gone. So I bought them and, of course, never regretted this decision. Uh, so uh, here are these two albums again. Uh, with vinyl. Yeah. So this is a wonderful album. The Illustrated Musical Encyclopedia. Uh, it has a lot of interesting people playing on it, of course, as you probably expect uh, uh, from Sakamoto. There's Thomas Dalby on it and uh, David Van Tegen and also Toshinori Kondo. And that's basically the next album I want to talk about. So uh, this is um, Taihan by Toshinori Kondo. Uh, mixed by Bill Laswell. Uh, Toshinori Kondo is an excellent uh, 
Japanese trumpet player and jazz musician, but also a no wave uh, artist. Uh, this album, um, it sounds, imagine Miles Davis making an album with the Talking Heads, that's probably how the album would sound. Um, but in hindsight, this notion is not such a surprise because uh, later I've looked it up in Wikipedia um, just to realize that in the late 70s, Toshinori Kondo was in New York actually and he was playing with people like Herbie Hancock. So, so he was also part of this whole no wave movement. So it's a very funky album in parts. It's, uh, it has a great flow. It has some very nice musical humor. It's actually one of my favorite by Toshinori Kondo. It's a little less aggressive than some of, some of his other albums. And, um, well, it's an outstanding job. If you, if you look uh, to enhance your New York No Wave record collection, you will not be disappointed by this beautiful album. And because I was already listening in this kind of vein, uh, it was quite obvious that my next pick will be Memory Serves by Material, uh, which was Material's kind of a second or first album, depending how you look at it. <laughs> now this is a very jazzy album and very edgy and uh, it has a quite a twang to it. And um, yeah, it's amazing because you kind of feel how this band at this point in time just does not give a damn about what the contemporary pop trends outside of their studio are. They're just doing their thing. And it's really great. So this came out on Celluloid in 1981. So this is an example of very early work by Material. Um, and as usual with Material, it's uh, kind of a musical thing of its own. And quite different from any other of the following albums. It's an instrumental album basically. Yeah, let's do one more. Now this time something completely different. I'm talking about The Visitor by Mick Fleetwood. So 1981 Mick Fleetwood, like Ginger Baker, 10 years before him went to Africa to Ghana to record an album. Well, it's a it's an interesting album, it's a good album, it's a, it's a nice expedition into certain musical styles. It's not an excellent album, I wouldn't go that far, uh, but it has some interesting moments, that's for sure. It's It came out as a gatefold sleeve, so uh, it has all kind of really nice photographs inside. It has also interesting people playing on it. Now, of course, uh, there are a lot of African musicians on it and um, brought uh, from uh, good old Europe. Um, you can hear George Harrison playing on it. Isn't that something? And also um, Ian Bernson on guitar and Andrew Powell arranging strings, which are two long-term alumni of the Alan Parsons project. Imagine that. Um, so um, it's always a good listen. I mean, one could argue that the album didn't embrace uh, the African culture enough. But uh, I don't want to be unfair. There are some really beautiful African tunes on it. I would say my favorite songs are certainly on the A side, Onyamali and Super Brains. I mean, Super Brains is very funky and very groovy, and this is a very sort of a driving, pumping tr instrumental track that's really cool. And uh, on the second side, I find even uh, more highlights. Most certainly, Cassiopeia Surrender is a great song. The Visitor, the, the, the eponym of this album, is excellent, and the final song. Again, a true sort of African tune is called a metal, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, good album. And um, before I close this little session, um, let's uh, have a look at one or two CDs I wanted to show you. Now, uh, this one I can recommend with all my heart, this is a compilation called Afrobeat No Go Die. 
with an outstandingly beautiful cover picture. I mean, that's the mother of all compilation cover pictures, I think. It probably can't get better than that. Now, this is sort of a... Well, this is sort of a second generation response to the music of Fela Kuti. Uh, so you have some wonderful bands doing music that ranges from funk to almost sort of a electronic, electronic dance music and a lot of jazz, a lot of sort of big beat music. And it's, it's very versatile. It's, uh, it's quite an eclectic collection. But there is just not a single stinker on this compilation. I'm pretty sure if you look it up, this probably doesn't cost more than uh, a dollar or two somewhere. So um, if you like modern African music and you don't have this one, give it a try. And to close it with something entirely different, and it couldn't get more different, um, this is a album I truly love and it exists only on CD. Those are this is the traditional music of Amygdala by the Hungarian composer Laszlo Hortobágyi. Now Laszlo Hortobágyi is a musical specialist for well on the one hand sampled and electronic music on the other hand he's a real expert for Middle East music. He's a sitar player, he's a percussionist. He's actually a a uh, professor of uh, musical history. So he's a very interesting uh, prominent figure in Hungarian uh, sort of progressive music. And he's doing his thing for 20, 30 years now. This was his second album. It came out in the early 90s. Um, it's it, sound wise, it's a little bit different than those he made later. It's certainly different than his first album. And um, if I have to, if I had to describe it, it would be quite difficult. Actually, this is like I mean, in parts, this sounds like it was not made on this planet. Believe me, I mean, parts of this there are tracks on it that just sound like a different, a different uh, star system. At the same time, there are huge uh, expeditions here into the world of. Um, uh, of, of Indian music, of Persian music, there's a lot of sitar playing, um, there's a lot of interesting bass guitar playing, he's actually quite a, quite an outstanding bass player. So um, if you are looking for something completely different, uh, that goes more in the direction of sort of ethnographic journeys, but very electronic, very, very ambient -y, that's a good tip for that, actually. So Laszlo Hertabadji, the traditional music of Amygdala. And that's it for now. And uh, I hope um, you liked some of the stuff. And let's do it again sometime. Bye bye.